Okay, welcome back to our uh, next class. Hope you had a good break, had a coffee, freshed yourself. Okay, we'll continue on. Um, uh, so what we've been looking up until now is, you know, we've been looking up. Uh, yes, Anita, you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Anita, um, go ahead. I wanted to uh, ask, like in the Old Testament, God has the, told Adam and Eve to uh, fruit, be fruitful and multiply. So from where the marriage institution came. And now, uh, like uh, how it is said, that if anybody has kingdom calling and uh, if, if they don't want to get, if if the, like they want to devote all of their time to it's the service, then they should not get married. But uh, like as we see nowadays, like all the pastors and leaders, they are all married. Like means what is upheld high? Is it singleness or uh, is that marriage is honored that way? Like I wanted to see their perspective like that. Okay, so uh, as we read in that uh, scripture, uh, Anita, it not that either of this are held high. Um, um, I, I think it was in that scripture. I'm just trying to look to where that scripture is. Um, yeah, it's in First Corinthians seven verse uh, thirty-eight, right? It says marriage um, is spiritually and morally right and not inferior to singleness in any way. So there isn't a, a state that is higher than the other. If you if you marriage or singleness needn't be looked at as inferior. These are choices that one can make. Okay. So when you look at Paul, it is a choice that he made. Uh, so he says that no in verse thirty two that. You know, live as so he's 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 telling you. You know, you can be uh, free of of these further complications. Um, and when if you are unmarried, you you have your complete concentration on the Lord. But marriage does involve certain responsibilities. So he's just giving you a, a comparison of what can what happens in both states. Or both lifestyles, but he does say that at the end it is not inferior. So it is a it is a choice that you make, you know, whether you want to do so, you know, even you can pursue kingdom calling even even when you're married, but if you'd want to do that without these additional responsibilities, that is also a choice that is given to you. So there's nothing that one is higher than the other. Both have its own challenges and both have its own uh, people have their own preferences or choices in making that decision that's what paul says here uh, right ma'am the only thing is uh, i was thinking that in old testament that as god had told like uh, adam and eve to multiply and be fruitful mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was thinking, like uh, this option of singleness, is it come only in New Testament? Because uh, as a mankind, God had uh, they commanded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a commission. It's by default that is a commission, and uh, so I'm I'm trying to think about um, in the Old Testament. Um, you know, we we're not given accounts of maybe many uh, of some um, you know of some of the prophets about you know whether they're married or not we we don't have a count of it you know so um, i don't know if it is uh, uh, easy to assume that um, however that's something i will also do i i shall also check to find uh, um, if there is any other insight on that, Anita. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There are there are actually many prophets, uh, not just Jeremiah. If you look at uh, Elisha, you know there aren't accounts. If uh, if I remember right, I'm not. I, that's why I'm not hundred percent sure. I, I will need to look at. Old Testament um, 
prophets or um, you know those who've been working for the lord whether they've been married or not so i i will check that but yeah like i said you know scripture may may not bring about those accounts so it may be hard to assume that this is only a new testament um, um teaching all right okay so we'll we'll move ahead of um uh, so what we've been doing up until now is building certain foundations of what marriage and family is. So we're looking, we looked at, uh, uh, you know, understanding marriage, finding biblical perspectives in marriage. We looked at uh, preparation. We've looked at making a choice. Um, there are two more areas that we are going to be looking at when we are looking at foundational truths in marriage. And we're going to be skipping um, one one chapter. And maybe we are going to be going into the chapter on attitudes, uh, temperament, and behavior. And that's that you can find that on um, page. Um, uh, you can find that on page. Two. 56 okay on page 56 that's uh, we're going to be looking at a um, very important foundation of preparing for manage, marriage okay so uh, when, when we're looking at the, I, I think this is one of the uh, this is this is a chapter that you can look in not just uh, in relation to marriage, but in relation to your personal transformation, your personal growth, as well as the way that you relate to anyone for that matter, you know, people in your families, people at your workplace, people in ministry, just uh, learning about and understanding, uh, even introspecting and examining these three specific core words. So uh, every relationship, whatever relationship you may be in is determined by certain traits that you exhibit okay and these traits uh, or certain characteristics not traits certain characteristics that you exhibit one is your attitude uh, the second is your temperament and the third is your behavior so let's just quickly look at what these words mean before we dive into how this applies in a relationship and especially in marriage so when what do we mean by attitude attitude is the way of thinking or feeling about something okay it can be anything what are your attitudes or what are your ways of thinking and feeling about something so i could bring up any uh, any subject matter to you and ask you what is your attitude towards it okay so i can bring about uh, maybe a word like junk food what is your attitude towards junk food or it can be what is your attitude towards marriage what is your attitude towards hard work so we all develop certain ways of thinking about everything around and these attitudes generally come by because of what we have experienced because of maybe some of our backgrounds what we have seen happen in our lives or what we've heard what we've uh, what we've read what we've experienced so these attitudes have a lot of backing to it the, the way that you think or feel about things have a lot of backing to it okay so that's what we mean by attitudes what do we mean by the word temperament now temperament is is the nature of a person the um it, it is how we are the inclination that you have towards life and towards uh, towards towards life or towards anything that we are talking about so your your inclination towards towards um, towards doing something so what are you driven to so that's what a temperament is the nature of a person how you are as a person you know you may have heard of words uh, you know similar words like personality um you know this is the kind of person i am this is the type of person i am uh, i am introverted i'm extroverted there you know there are many many words that we use to 
explain the kind of people or the nature that is there within us. Okay, so that's what temperament is. And behavior, of course, it is an action or something that we do. All right, so attitude is the way that we think or feel about things. Temperament is the nature or our general inclination towards life. And um, behavior is the action or things that we do. So when two people do get married, okay, and they live together, uh, what is it that comes out in the forefront is their specific attitudes and temperament. Okay, so we are like this, uh, like, like a structural house that has a lot of attitudes and uh, 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 traits or characteristics that is what gets thrown out in a relationship. Okay, and these attitudes of this temperament is very important or it plays a very significant role when we relate with each other. So what you are meeting when you meet with a person or when you are in marriage is not just their physical bodies, but it is a lot of the way they think, the way they feel, certain characteristics that they are and the way that they behave. So that is what is expressed uh, in a relationship in different situations. So, you know, uh, we may have come across very many people who have um, very good skills, uh, especially if you look in the you know, in a medical community, I hope none of you are doctors. I have nothing against doctors or nurses or anything. Okay, they are, uh, you know, God given people. But, you know, in my experience, I've seen there may be uh, or certain professionals, you know, who are very good at their work. They're very skilled. They may be um, exemplary intellectually or, you know, in, in their knowledge of things or in their capacities, but they have their attitudes or their personalities or their temperament uh, is, is uh, you know, it, it immediately makes you, you know, you must have, must have had experiences like that saying, you know, the doctor is a great doctor, but he has a terrible attitude, right? Or, for example, there may be people with, uh, with uh, great um, um, uh, achievements, right? A uh, lot of achievements or great appearance or maybe a lot of money or or something that, that makes them uh, look uh, good or makes them feel as if they are, they've, they are well-versed or they, they've achieved a lot. But inside of them is packaged this, these attitudes or their characteristics, okay? So what we are referring to when we say attitudes and temperament is the way that we think, the way that we perceive, and the way that we behave or react. So what we are essentially dealing with is these traits, these emotional and uh, uh, these emotional and mental traits is what we are interacting with when uh, when there is um, when we are dealing with with a person, okay? So when we look at these attitudes, there are specifically two important uh, uh, issues that we need that this, that this brings up, okay? So number one is the personal one, where we need to be uh, aware and ensure that the way that we are thinking or the way that we are behaving or reacting is healthy and is contributing to the good environment or the well-being of my marriage and my family. Okay, so I need to ensure that I have a good attitude and a good temperament and the way that I behave is in a way that is in line to build and encourage the family and the home. The second challenge we find is the need to understand the your spouse's capacity to think, to react, to behave, to act, uh, and co or even to communicate in a way so that you can understand your partner um, well. So it's just not a self-awareness, but it is also an awareness of your spouse in the way that they think, they behave, their personality is, so that there can be, again, an agreement and oneness. Okay, so 
in marriage or in any relationships we are ultimately facing these attitudes and these behaviors and these character traits so if we house or if we have negative emotions or attitudes or behaviors it definitely causes a strain in the relationship it can be challenging it can be detrimental to the marriage in itself okay and as individuals and as believers we need to develop those attitudes which are christ like have a temperament of personality that is controlled by the holy spirit and have behavior that is uh that that is in alignment with the word of god okay so this is more a self Uh, this is a lesson for each one of us for us to keep looking in so that in our relationships we because these things the attitude the our character our temperament and our behavior is what really exposes us we need to look back and examine whether our attitudes are negative whether our behavior is um is difficult and whether whether our personalities or our temperaments are also negative and and change them transform them in accordance to god's word okay so we in our initial chapter we stress this need of growing in emotional health and this is closely related to that okay and um, uh, we, we're going to be looking at specific um uh attitudes okay that that we we may see in ourselves as a result of our carnal nature that may come about okay now as believers what are we called to do we are called to be christ like if you look at it in ephesians 4:13 it says we are to come to the stature of the fullness of christ we are to come into the stature of the fullness of christ and also we are to uh Uh, our attitudes begin to change only when we abide in god when we abide in him we will walk as he walked as christ walked 1 john 2:6 says when we abide in him we will walk as christ christ walks so this applies to all our relationships and so much more for our marriage and for the people we deal with on a regular basis our our, our spouses our children our family members so this it teaches us how we must be christ like so we are called to have that attitude as christ so if we look at scripture scripture has um, you know in in very many um, places has spoken about what our hearts or what our attitudes need need to be like in several places in scripture we are called to maintain this christ like attitude and and some of the examples um uh, you know i'm going to maybe just quickly go through a few uh, on page uh, 57 and 58 you will uh, you know the the rest of the scripture will be there but i'm just going to quickly go through a few and you can take time to read through the rest to really define and see what kind of attitude god uh you know is is being highlighted this christ like attitudes which are being shown out in this in these verses so in philippians uh 2 3 and 5 it says don't do anything from selfish ambition so it's talking about you know be selfless be selfless then it says uh if you go further down it says but be humble towards one another always considering others better than yourself so it's talking about humility it talks about sacrifice and being able to give your preference to others it says in verse 6 look for another's interest so a sacrifice where you are giving preference to a, to another verse 7 says um look uh, and uh, instead of this he's talking about jesus how he took the nature of a servant right so taking that na- nature having uh, an attitude of humility where you are able to serve so here we are called to these attitudes of selflessness there's humility there's sacrifice there is giving a preference to others um not being focused self focused but holding on to 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 what is what is there in others okay other scriptures that come about um uh, i'll take uh, 
Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, it says, do everything without complaining or arguing. So there, it's not complaining, not arguing. Be innocent of evil, OK? Be uh, be prudent about, about evil. Looking at Philippians 4, 4 to 8, show a gentle attitude towards everyone. Okay, don't worry about everything. So it is about having being being patient in, in affliction, having faith, okay, and God's peace that is enjoying God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. If you look at verse eight, it talks about things that you need to think of to fill your mind with good things, fill your mind with that which is true, which is noble, which is right, which is pure, which is lovely. Um, which which is honorable okay so if if you look at this 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 entire uh, these these very many verses in ephesians philippians and james it all talks about attitudes that we need uh, which are christ like okay and if 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 you look at page um uh, page 50 page 58 in in the first paragraph after the verses it actually gives you a uh, um uh, sorry, the second paragraph. It all it gives you a, you know a list of negative attitudes. Um, so some of them being anger, arrogance, argumentative, being cynical, being demanding. I mean, there's an entire list over there. So you know, I, I think it's a good practice for us to look into this list to see what are some of the negative attitudes that we may be harboring okay so what these scripture teaches us is that we what we must maintain as believers is what is given in scripture okay and these attitudes is something that we even take on into our relationships in in our marriage so uh, getting a list just understanding what does god expect of us when we build our attitudes when we grow in in some of our attitudes so what happens when you have a bad attitude when uh, so uh, you know like for example let's say you know we don't like somebody right we we feel um negative about some somebody when we have a bad attitude towards somebody it affects the way that we view them right it affects the we we see them in the worst possible light we there is there is negativity in everything that the person may say the person may do the person may behave and this just leads us into a very wrong kind of an interaction and relationship with that person so it does not just make that person unhappy breaks the relationship but it also affects you and makes you unhappy every time you are around that person so having a bad attitude affects everything the way everything and and especially in the way that we relate to one another a bad attitude can also influence three things it can influence your expectation it can influence your experience it can influence your exit okay like for example let's say you want to um uh maybe there is a new course you want to take okay and uh, you begin you begin with with let's say if, if there's an attitude if there's a negative attitude to that you know you're you set off with the wrong expectation okay you're probably expecting something bad right and you're expecting something wrong you're expecting okay the the teacher is not going to be good or uh, you know it's going to be a class that's going to be so boring there isn't going to be um you know this this elements of it so your attitude is definitely going to affect your expectation your attitude is also going to affect your experience the way that you may be sitting in the class because you have a negative attitude to it there is no motivation there may be nothing to really encourage you to 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 do those challenging assignments or it's almost like you're there just for the sake of it you're pulling yourself along it dragging yourself along along there and you know making the experience a very very miserable one so it not just affects your expectation it affects your experience it also affects your exit you know that when when you leave uh, what are you taking out of it if you come in with a negative attitude you can be sure you're not going to take anything out from there you're going to be holding on to the negatives of it and um, maybe complaining and grumbling and saying i shouldn't have wasted my time that was a waste of my money that was a waste so you find that 
it can impact the entire phase of of your experience of of a certain situation so the these negative attitudes behaviors do not help us at all okay we also need to understand that uh, it, these attitudes are learned um that sometimes it it is something that um uh, it's it's because of certain maybe certain situations that have that have happened in the past that that makes you believe that things are are going to be that way right so if if there is for example any kind of a negative emotion that you are harboring inside it releases a negative attitude so so it 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 is it can either be learned you learn this attitude from someone or it can be because of those negative um uh, feelings that may be there with it we need to know that our attitude is a choice you and i have a choice there may there are things in life that will come but the way we decide to progress into it is something that you and i have a hold and a command over okay we decide and say in a situation like this i can naturally look at it negatively or i can look into the word ask the power of the holy spirit to change me in some of these attitudes it may not be easy it's not something that um it may change overnight but the more that you keep yourself in the word of god knowing that these are christ like attitudes the way christ dealt with people you know is is the way that you want to imbibe those same attitudes right so when you do that with the power of the holy spirit you know that change will come about okay so if we are how do we change this number 1 being open to the lord being vulnerable and open to the lord saying lord i struggle with this whatever it may be anger it may be discontentment it may be jealousy it may be negativity lord i come to you with this i struggle with this i need you to do your work in me and help me to change these attitudes and behaviors so what does the spirit do he just does not deal with the with the uh with the presentation of it but also with the roots with why in the first place did those attitudes come about so it may be because of some form of unforgiveness towards something or somebody that there is a sense of anger that keeps coming out right so to so uh, the lord helps us to deal with the root of those attitudes and brings about the change that can be lasting so if you look at scripture you know scripture scripture shows that um you know we god transforms us into his image he transforms us into the image of christ by the power of the holy spirit that is in 2 corinthians 3:18 or that he makes us will and to do according to his good pleasure so bringing it to god asking god to deal with those negative behaviors and attitudes and change them so that we can have those christ like attitudes and behaviors so i want to challenge each of you you know if you can get back to that page 58 into the third paragraph and look at that entire list the opposite of these positive christ like attitudes is what we call negative attitudes and there's a entire list of things and um, it may really surprise you how many of it um you know uh, you actually uh, show or or you actually qualify for okay but coming to that place of just uh, you know examining yourself uh, asking god to reveal areas um that that may be that that's probably not hid, is hidden to you another good exercise is you know especially for those of us who are married ask your spouse they will probably have a much better judgment on what are some of those attitudes right so asking and and really bringing it up to the lord and working on those attitudes because having these negative attitudes can be very detrimental to uh any relationship especially the one in marriage you know for example let's say you have a there is this attitude of being critical of of just finding finding fault in anything 
you know, even if your spouse brings something, there's always, you never see the good side of it, say, okay, I, it's okay, but I liked something else, or this tastes better, but I think it needed a bit more salt, or you look okay, but maybe, you know, a black shirt would have looked better. So being cynical or being critical, that, that uh, you know, we need to look into the depth of ourselves to find out where is the source of it? Why is it that I find uh, looking at everything negative come from? So, you know, asking the Lord to open that part up for you and help you through that, okay? The next that we'll go into is temperament. I'll complete this and maybe uh, we'll take the last 10 minutes for any specific questions. When we look at temperament, like I said, it's the inclination or the nature of us as people, okay? And that's what really expresses uh, uh, who we are, right? The way we think, the way we react, the way we speak. There is a specific personality in us. Okay, so you would have, like I said, you know, there are many terms that are given to this word temperament. It can be, and you will, you know, you will have it being thrown all around. So you will have words like personality. I am a talkative person. I'm an outgoing person. I'm an ambivert. I'm an introvert. Um, and and you will see that there are uh, there are many kinds of personality types that that are that are being spoken of. And theoretically, if you actually read it up, there are so many personality studies. And, you know, you have type A personality, you have the type B personality, you have, um, you know, the old Hippocrates uh, uh, personality types of the sanguine, the choleric, the melancholic, the phlegmatic. I mean, there are so many theories that come about. So, um, you know, some of them, I may not be scientific in itself and uh, and are generally uh, not taken it is it's good to understand you know yourself and know what are some traits or some strengths or some weaknesses that you have and we do find that uh, very often we may we may not be we may not exactly fit into a personality type but we may be a good blend of many things okay and uh, to to know to know what it is now Regardless of what our personalities may be, we need to recognize that when, when we look at ourselves, we must again see, you know, uh, I, I often hear this statement, you know, this is the way that I am, I can't change myself. But I don't completely take on that because it's a choice. It is a choice if I decide, you know, maybe when there are people walking into my house, whether I will walk in, not talk to anybody, or I will stay out and maybe say a few words and try and make some kind of a communication or a conversation, right? So it's a choice. No matter what our temperaments, the way that we react, the way that we are is a choice. And we are not bound or trapped in our natures, okay, or uh, or anything that we may be doing or we may be thinking. But if we decide or if we choose, we can unlearn some of these patterns that have been wrong and develop that which is good and positive. So as believers, we are all called, uh, when, we, when we are in Christ, we are also called to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That which, what does this mean? So this means that in spite or whatever we may be as individuals, whatever personalities we may have, we need to give of ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that His influence begins to manifest in our nature and our character. So I'll, I'll bring that up again. So no matter how we are as people or as personalities, we need to be filled or impacted or influenced by the Holy Spirit in ways that we can show out the nature and the character of God. So does that mean we lose ourselves? No, we are, we continue to be ourselves, but we choose to yield to to the Spirit of God, so that it is His nature, His power, His strength that can go out of us in order to bless others as well as to glorify God. So when we consistently do this, this is what we say we are walking in the Spirit. 
So what does that specifically mean? It's like, you know, you may be going about your day regularly and, uh, you know, you meet many people and the constant um, asking, saying, you know, Holy Spirit, fill me at this time so that however I respond to this person in this situation, it will reflect who you are. It will reflect your nature. Maybe you are in an argument with somebody. Okay. And a quick prayer, Holy Spirit, may I be filled by you so that I can show your nature rather than my temperament or my personality. Okay. And that's what we and that's what we do see as the fruit of the spirit. In Galatians 5, 22, 23 it talks about nine fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So this when we yield, when we attach, when we uh, um, uh, when we willingly offer ourselves to be influenced, this is what we see. We it becomes spirit filled. It becomes controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's when the fruit the fruit begins to show. The fruit, as we know, is is these nine fruit of the spirit: love, where we are, where we are able to express acceptance and love to others; joy, where there is a, a sense of uh, uh, rejoicing in everything about life, where we have peace, where there is shalom in, 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 in things, where there is patience, patience, where we are willing to endure with, with so much, where there is kindness, where we show a sense of compassion to, to others, where there is goodness, there's faithfulness, where we committed, we stay loyal, where there's humility, where there's self-control. Okay, so when the spirit of the Lord is in us, we will experience freedom in the way that we uh, express ourselves, as it says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there there is freedom. When there is freedom in the spirit, he brings all of that joy and that freedom, that peace, that joy, the fruit of the spirit that, that just comes out of us. So when these fill our lives, what we are doing is keeping away those attitudes or those that temperament and taking on the character, the the attitudes of Christ and and the um, and the control of the spirit in our lives, so that you know in our relationship with others, we are exhibiting who Christ is. We're exhibiting what the Holy Spirit shows us to be. Okay. So next time, we will look a little more in detail about the behavior, about word-governed behavior, and what is it, how can we personally transform ourselves? Because all of us, when we, like I said, when we examine ourselves, we know that there are very many attitudes or, or personality traits that we're not very proud of, right? And we keep that quite hidden. And the people who see that most are those uh, in our families, Right, so um, we're going to be looking at the, the our behaviors as well as how can we per, be personally transformed when uh, you know in in these specific areas. Okay, yeah, we have ten minutes more, and I'd like to open this up for any specific uh, question. Any questions? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Um, several, but I'm trying to <laughs> align my questions. I'm not sure about art. So one is around uh, personality. Uh, the, uh, like you mentioned, there's so many tools and researchers um, that go out there that, that is out there uh, i think uh, one that i have used uh, is the myers briggs uh, 16 person uh, so um i mean uh, i see some value in in uh, in, in in a personality test or an exercise uh, because you kind of get to uh you know what types are there and where do you, like, how are you aligned? What are your own strengths, weaknesses? Some little bit of insight into why you are the way you are. 
so that's but i'm again I, this is a, this is such a worldly knowledge right i mean it's 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 a it's a combination of stereotyping versus uh some practical statistical data that's gone into making these personalities um and uh, and it's uh, i don't know in, in a lot of ways i think even uh, it it contradicts uh, the bible i think in, in a lot of ways because uh my personality test might just uh, define me some other way but but uh, god has defined me in a different way so i think question one is uh, how like how do we engage in at least the ones that are popular personality tests the one that you mentioned the hippo and that that's something new that i haven't uh, that, or in the myers brick like um do you see that in um in people doing it, especially in believers doing that uh, more so to get a sense of um, how you are i mean you know yes there is there is a biblical truth of who you are in christ but apart from that do you do you engage it or do you say like for example horoscope they we clearly stay away from horoscope we don't we don't subscribe to that at all uh, but personality is like what um, what would you say is that so that's one uh, and after the answer that probably I'll ask my second question which is around change okay yeah so um so i think uh, sam's question was of all the personality tests that are running around and that you know that that seems to be so prevalent there are standardized tests uh, all of that is it is it right for a believer to engage in in taking one of those those tests mm, okay so um now now what these tests do it it gives you it highlights Uh, certain things about you in the natural of how you operate in the natural okay and if you are a person who's very keen and aware of who you are you probably know most of it yourself and you really don't need one to assess that okay and uh, again let me tell you not all personality tests are foolproof okay there are very many times you will have things that aren't accurate at all and that in itself tells you that there are very many factors that uh, that show your temperament like for example at, at let's say you've had a bad day and you're going and doing that personality test your your responses are so colored by by what you are going through and these are certain limitations of these personality tests which is which is well uh, recorded and and written as well okay so it's not something that will give you a complete significant understanding of yourself so uh, so to 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 mention that it is only the holy spirit that can that can really reveal what is within your heart okay now does is it okay to do this is it is it not okay to do it it's fine i i don't see anything wrong in in doing a personality test as long as like we said that we take what we have or what we see or what is being um what 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 has been evaluated as something going to be etched in stone this is what it says this is how i am there's no way that i'm going to change i think that's where the fallout happens if you are able to see a little bit about yourself and that you may even be able to do it in a conversation with other people you know you may have people who say hey you know this is what i think you are or you know i this is what i've noticed you to be right so they're giving you a feedback and this is you know you're just writing a test of of trying to you know making sense of the way that you react and and doing that and that's just a feedback that's given to you i think the process in itself is okay there isn't a harm on that but the results that you get if it if it comes as if an understanding that this is what it is and there's no more change that happens that's where it that's where um we are out of um, out of scripture because we are called to become christ like we are called to change our ways of living you know everywhere in scripture it is it is a progressive sanctification how can we become more and more like christ 
So if there are pointers that helps you in your personality to see, OK, there are maybe these areas that aren't in line with scripture. And maybe I feel that in my spirit, I also feel that that is true. That's when we are looking at, you know, um, changing and coming to a place of change and transforming the way we are as people. I think these personality tests gives you an insight. And uh, that's as much as you can take from it. I mean, don't don't pay too much of attention or seek too much of a, um, wisdom from it. Just that it gives you an insight and it helps you to move into something that is more Christ-like. Samuel? Yeah, I got all of that. Um, and thank you. Um, I, I think I really like the progressive sanctification. Uh, how you know the Bible calls us to uh, living a life of progressive sanctification, and uh, I think yeah, the the result uh, in identifying that whatever result the the personality tests show, it it's not the final verdict. It, it it it's some indication of who I am, but but that that can always change. I think I think I, I really like that part. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask was, and probably you know some of it maybe we'll capture in the next session, which is uh, around change. Uh, so I think, uh, especially in the context of marriage uh, and family, so uh, there's, I'm thinking change is at two levels. One is uh, a self change, like I I am conscious, I'm consciously uh, changing or trying to change my behavior, uh, my adaptability, uh, my temperament, my um, attitudes and and you know developing and uh then there is uh influencing your spouse's change like let's say uh, i mean at one is you wish your wife to change or you wish your husband to change but just wishing isn't enough so how do you help uh you know someone to change uh, and uh, so these are the two things and, and i mean both of them i like i every time i think of uh, the way of change and how does change happen? It, it baffles me. You know, sometimes I, 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 it, 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 I feel it's, it's almost wishful thinking. Like, like how a person, and I, I know change happens. Uh, uh, a person who is very short-tempered can change and become a calm and a patient person, and it's nothing sort of a miracle. Uh, but the process of how that happens, you know, and, and yes, a lot of it uh, is the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, what are the steps that we can consciously put in? I, I see the value of putting in a process, a system in place. Like, let's say if I'm, I have a problem with gratitude, and if I just put in a system of writing a thank you note every day, uh, and even if I'm forced myself, like 9 to 10, I just sit down every morning, and even if I can one thank you note out of me, that's... So that, that, I think as I'm kind of going into the nuts and bolts of uh, how does change happen, both for self and, uh, and how, how can uh, you influence your self to change. So anything on that. Thank you. OK. So, um, so you spoke about two things. One is personal change and the change that you would desire for your spouse. So one, um, uh, I think marriage teaches you one thing, that more than you focusing on the change of your spouse, um, focus on the change that you can bring by. Okay, And that's a principle a lot of us have learned after years of marriage. Our initial years of marriage goes in changing the partner. And the, the next few years, then you, know, you begin to dawn on yourself and say, you know, where, you know, which school did I go to? And then you say, OK, I, this has to start from me. right? So that, I think if, if you're looking at an order, that's the order. For those of you who aren't married, that's the order. First, it's a personal, attitudinal, temperamental change. Then it is even attempting or you know, getting the other, uh, your spouse to change. Um, how does this how does this change or in transformation happen with the spouse? We're going to be dealing with that briefly in the next chapter. And um, it is, I think, easier said than it is done. You know, let's say you have a nagging spouse, okay? You could probably open scripture and say, you know, this is what scripture says. And, you know, they may nag you a little bit more, right? But it is a process. 
it requires that patience it requires that that endurance all of that right so um we will be dealing with that a lot more but i think change couple of ways change happens one is immersing yourself in the word um there is this uh, there is the scripture that talks about how the kingdom of god is uh, uh like a seed i'm just trying to get that scripture out to um to just help us understand that um it talks about how um the kingdom of uh, god is like a seed that is being planted and it grows but it is not you're not even aware of what how the change or the transformation happens in the heart of of a of you know of the person so when we are saying for transformation very often can we give it a step by step process and see when does it happen that that attitude begins to change i think the process is more important being able to immerse ourselves in god's word being able to continue renewing our minds you know helping our minds to understand this is not god's way or this is not god's methods this is what he desires of me so the more and more that we regurgitate the word of god it brings about its juices and and you know the the power of the holy spirit is what brings about that change that that you see and that, like 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 you rightly said sam that is a miracle that cannot be done by human means human methods uh, of course it requires your will your choice of being disciplined in doing what um what we are called to do renewing our minds you know putting off the old self and taking on the new these are all by immersing ourselves in the word of god declaring in faith what he sees in us you know even just praying i have a uh, god has called me to have the mind of christ um you know god has called me to uh, to to thrive in the fruit of the spirit praying and continuing to in situations when you are really faced with those conditions being able to um respond through that you know making those quick prayers like i said holy spirit you know work inside me may my spirit yield to you may my character yield to you so that only what you want comes in and and you will begin to see the grace and the power of god working without you maybe doing much but just having had said the prayer of faith so the way that it works it's like you know a dead seed if you put it into the right conditions it grows Okay, that's what that's how the kingdom of god works in the heart of man it grows similarly when we put our dry selves our dead attitudes our dead temperaments our personalities into a conducive place in god's uh, uh god's environment his word you know in his spirit it will grow so it's a supernatural work it is something that um we may not really be able to see with our eyes but we will experience um with with our hearts uh, and our spirits at the way god has worked through i hope i answered that to the best i think i answered it to the best of I, what i could you, 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 you did you did yeah. thank you so much uh, i could i could i could imagine um sharing with my wife later on about how I, how I asked you about influencing changing spouse and that so that you can, and I can I can see her uh, imagine her everyone now that <laughs> and agreeing with you completely that that you need to change her so, uh, yeah that's been great but yes uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the bi- biblical approach uh, or a believer's approach to to um i think bringing change in one's life uh, just mm-hmm. a few steps that you give i think uh, that that was really good thank you right okay great thank you thank you sam all right thank you so much for uh, coming today let's just uh, close with a word of prayer um uh, and uh, we could uh, dis- dismiss heavenly father we thank you for your word lord god that um, illuminates reveals so much within us that is hidden that is uh, away from our understanding lord we pray that you will give us hearts of 
examination, Lord. May we, may we take this time to examine our ways, our thoughts, our attitudes, our feelings, our behavior, the way that we have been in nature, Father. May we take this time by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are that counselor. You're the one who guides us and you're the one who reveals and convicts us of our sin, and we can trust that you will do that for us. Lord, we desire to be Christ-like. Father, we pray that the work of the Holy Spirit will be made complete in us, Lord, in our, in our lifetime, Father, that we will, we will begin to see those areas that, that are wicked, those areas that are negative, those areas that bring no fruit to you, Lord. And Father, may we uh, have the, be challenged to bring these things to you. And Lord, be transformed into your likeness, into your image, to be able to walk like you walked, to be, to, to be the new man as you desire us to be. I pray that each one of us on this call would take time to really uh, introspect and and uh, search out and and find Lord what is in us God even if there may be things that that may be open to us that we aren't proud of Father may we have the humility to to bring it before you because you're a God who sees everything you're a God who knows us from inside out Lord right into the depths of our heart. And we pray, God, that even as you reveal this to us, that we will have, Lord, the humility to bring it to you. And, uh, and we pray that we will yield our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts to you and have it be transformed, thereby bringing you glory and building our relationships. Thank you for honoring our prayer and for doing this for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless, and we will meet in our next Thank class. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am.